Hey, hello everybody, Facebook Live, Brady Theodore here. Hey, I'm going to come on today, tonight, this morning, whenever you happen to be watching this, and I want to just talk about my struggles since becoming an online marketer, which is not always online. It does, uh, it does have to have a lot of offline communication also. Um, when I started uh, two years ago, I thought, like everybody else thinks, they run across an ad on Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn or wherever, and they see some guy boasting or showing off his jewelry, his cash, his cars, his houses, his trips, vacations, uh, laptop luxury lifestyle, and uh, it resonates with everybody because everybody wants those things out of life. Uh, so yeah, I dove right in thinking I'm going to be one of those people. Well, it doesn't take long uh, for most to figure out that it can't be done. It's a scam. They're going to quit. Well, let me tell you, quitting is the biggest failure in life that you can do. I don't know how many of you out there uh, are quitters. If you've started a job someplace, uh, maybe in your teens, early 20s, and you quit for whatever reason, it doesn't really matter but uh, you quit and by quitting you're giving up you're giving up on yourself you're giving up on your family you're giving up on your personal dreams and aspirations and it's not beneficial uh, for you as a person uh, within your own mind uh, you'll dwell on it and over the years this turns into baggage uh, maybe right after that you got another job and you worked hard, but the boss you had was a dick. So you quit. Well, there you are, quitting again. You got another job. You thought that is going to be the job. This is my career. And you start working, you start learning, and things get rough, and you quit, and you move on to another job. All these quittings are nothing but failures and they're personal failures and they add up they become baggage in your life uh, and by the time that you're 30 you've gone through a, a number of jobs or maybe you did hold down a job but you hated it you absolutely hate it every day you get up and you go to this job and you just the whole time you're there you're thinking why why me why can't I find something to do in my life that I like, that I'm passionate about. Well, I'm here to tell you it's there. And why continue to do the things in life that you don't like? If you don't like it, don't do it. If it's not working, change it. Uh, you know, if you don't have freedom with your time to do what you want to do, then you need to find a way to get the freedoms in your life, in your time, that you believe is worth it to you whether it's five minutes out of the day five hours or the whole day there's ways to do this but as you are taking these quits which are nothing but fails they are stacking up they're just stacking up in your life one after another one after another until you've got a building full of rubble on top of you mentally where you just can't dig out. Your self-esteem is down. You're feeling blah, blue. You despise yourself. You don't like other people. Uh, all this is accumulating and then you're, you're kind of out of control and you're taking it out. You're lashing out at your, your loved ones. Maybe by then your wife, your children, your pets. It, it's not worth it to yourself or any of them for you to continue doing this to yourself. So back to my story, after 
60 years. Now I've had some jobs that I absolutely love, careers that I have loved, a main career. Personally, I have never been a quitter. I don't believe that I ever got a job in my life that I quit. Uh, I, I had a lot of struggles, yes, going through each and every one of them. I may, I probably, and I know for a fact, I did not like some of the jobs that I had been doing. Uh, my very, very first job when I was 15 years old, uh, my parents let me work at night, even while I was in high school. And I was running around with a cleaning company by myself at 15 years old, being locked in dirty, dusty, damp, crappy bars. And I was cleaning the floors and the tables and the booths. And uh, to me, uh, at the time, I thought I liked it because it was my first job. But I realized that I didn't like it because it was hard work. Um, and at the end of, oh, let's see, I did that through the last part of my, um, geez, I think I was a sophomore in high school. I did that through the second half of the term and then summer came around and the, the guy ended up letting me go. Um, no, not for any reason. He just wanted somebody that could be more, that was more older, more mature, that could do the job he thought better. So anyway, um, I left that job. I didn't have another job until late in my 17th year. I ended up going into the Navy. And as a 17 year old, I had no real life experiences. Uh, I was thrown into the mixing pot with a bunch of adults and had to learn life pretty much the hard way. I mean, I, I decided on my own, I was gonna leave home. I was gonna make it on my own. And the only way that I saw to do that uh, was going into the military. Uh, I knew that I'd have shelter I'd have some money, I'd be fed, but along with that came a lot of responsibility um, on my end to not fail, not quit. And believe me, I was 17 years old and I saw 20 somethings going into boot camp and bailing and quitting, crying. Mommy, they had to get out and they got out. But again, that's a fail, a major fail. And I went ahead and stuck with it. I had stayed in the service for five years. Uh, ended up loving it to this day. I look back wishing I would have stayed in. Hey, hello everybody. Facebook Live, Brady Theodore here. Hey, I'm going to come on today tonight, this morning, whenever you happen to be watching this, and I want to just talk about my struggles since becoming an online marketer, which is not always online. It does, uh, it does have to have a lot of offline communication also. Um, when I started uh, two years ago, I thought, like everybody else thinks, they run across an ad on Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn or wherever, and they see some guy boasting or showing off his jewelry, his cash, his cars, his houses, his trips, vacations, uh, laptop luxury lifestyle, and uh, it resonates with everybody because everybody wants those things out of life uh, so yeah I dove right in thinking I'm gonna be one of those people well it doesn't take long uh, for most to figure out that it can't be done it's a scam they're gonna quit well let me tell you quitting is the biggest failure in life that you can do. I don't know how many of you out there uh, are quitters. If you've started a job someplace, uh, maybe in your teens, early 20s, and you quit, 
for whatever reason, it doesn't really matter, but uh, you quit. And by quitting, you're giving up. You're giving up on yourself. You're giving up on your family. You're giving up on your personal dreams and aspirations. And it's not beneficial uh, for you as a person uh, within your own mind. Uh, it, you'll dwell on it. And over the years, this turns into baggage. Uh, maybe right after that, you got another job and you worked hard, but the boss you had was a dick. So you quit. Well, there you are, quitting again. You got another job. You thought that is going to be the job. This is my career. And you start working, you start learning, and things get rough, and you quit, and you move on to another job. All these quittings are nothing but failures, and they're personal failures, and they add up. They become baggage in your life. Uh, and by the time that you're 30, you've gone through a, a number of jobs, or maybe you did hold down a job, but you hated it. You absolutely hate it. Every day you get up and you go to this job and you just, the whole time you're there, you're thinking, why? Why me? Why can't I find something to do in my life that I like, that I'm passionate about? Well, I'm here to tell you it's there. And why continue to do the things in life that you don't like? If you don't like it, don't do it. If it's not working, change it. Uh, you know, if you don't have freedom with your time to do what you want to do, then you need to find a way to get the freedoms in your life, in your time, that you believe is worth it to you. Whether it's five minutes out of the day, five hours, or the whole day, there's ways to do this. But as you are taking these quits, which are nothing but fails. They are stacking up. They're just stacking up in your life, one after another, one after another, until you've got a building full of rubble on top of you mentally, where you just can't dig out. Your self-esteem is down. You're feeling blah, blue. You despise yourself. You don't like other people. Uh, all this is accumulating and then you're you're kind of out of control and you're taking it out and you're lashing out at your your loved ones maybe by then your wife your children your pets it it's not worth it to yourself or any of them for you to continue doing this to yourself so back to my story after 60 years now I've had some jobs that I absolutely love, careers that I have loved, a main career. Personally, I have never been a quitter. I don't believe that I ever got a job in my life that I quit. Uh, I, I had a lot of struggles, yes, going through each and every one of them. I may, I probably, and I know for a fact, I did not like some of the jobs that I had been doing. Uh, my very, very first job when I was 15 years old. Uh, my parents let me work at night, even while I was in high school. And I was running around with a cleaning company by myself at 15 years old, being locked in dirty, dusty, damp, crappy bars. And I was cleaning the floors and the tables and the booths. And uh, to me, uh, at the time, I thought I liked it because it was my first job, but I realized that I didn't like it because it was hard work. Um, and at the end of, oh, let's see, I did that through the last part of my, um, geez, I think I was a sophomore in high school. I did that through the second half of the term and then summer came around and the, the guy ended up letting me go. Um, no, not for any reason. He just wanted somebody that could be more, that was more older, more mature, that could do the job he thought better. So anyway, um, I left that job. I didn't have another job until late in my 17th year. I ended up going into the Navy. 
And as a 17 year old, I had no real life experiences. Uh, I was thrown into the mixing pot with a bunch of adults and had to learn life pretty much the hard way. I mean, I, I decided on my own, I was going to leave home. I was going to make it on my own. And the only way that I saw to do that uh, was going into the military. Uh, I knew that I'd have shelter, I'd have some money, I'd be fed, but along with that came a lot of responsibility um, on my end to not fail, not quit. And believe me, I was 17 years old and I saw 20 somethings going into boot camp and bailing and quitting, crying. Mommy, they had to get out and they got out. But again, that's a fail, a major fail. And I went ahead and stuck with it. I had stayed in the service for five years. Uh, ended up loving it to this day. I look back wishing I would have stayed in. Is it a major regret in my life? No. Do I feel regret? Yes. I could have had that career behind me plus another one uh, from 20 to 40 uh, or until 37, from 17 to 37 and from 37 to 57. And believe it or not, I am now over 60. So I can, I am at this time working on my third career. So after I got out of the service, I went into uh, sales, <laughs> vacuum cleaner sales, door to door. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do when I got out of the service. I had been trained to be an aircraft mechanic, and I knew that I did not really want to pursue that the rest of my life. My father was a mechanic in the steel mills, uh, worked there for 30 years, got an early retirement. You know, for him, that was great. For me, it wasn't. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to make my millions. I wanted to do something on my own. So I started out in sales as a vacuum cleaner salesman actually did very well at it because I was trained by a hardcore uh, salesman at the time. That was in the uh, 1980, 81. And this guy was sharp, he was young, he was forceful, determined. He was making a business out of his business, which was vacuum cleaners. And when I came into his office, he thought he hit the jackpot with me, with my looks, uh, the way I could speak. And he trained me and I ended up putting on training classes and recruiting people and sending them out selling vacuum cleaners. I would take them out with me and sell these door to door. And believe me, you talk about rejection. Uh, at that time, that was face to face, personal rejection. The only way you made a sale was um, being perceived as a very good person, um, being liked, and trusted right off the bat from the moment you met somebody. And I did very well at it. Uh, I did that for about a year. Uh, I, I knew that at the time I had to move on because that wasn't going to be my lifelong career, but I did very well at that. I ended up going into retail sales um, with no knowledge of business numbers, what it took to uh, run an operation. So I went into retail sales as a shoe salesman, you know, uh, what was that guy Bundy, uh, Al, Al Bundy didn't run around scratching my crotch, but, uh, <laughs> I was a shoe salesman, uh, the same old jokes, same old things, you know, rubbing women's feet and, uh, but it was a humbling job. And when I was young, being humble and doing what I thought was expected as a job was really nothing. I'd already been through five years in the military. I'd clean bathrooms with a toothbrush. So putting shoes on somebody's feet was not a big deal to me. But I ended up sticking with that for a, a number of years, probably three or four years. But by the time I had one and a half years in as a salesman, I had already been recruited as a manager trainee for that company. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll tell you a name, it was Naturalizer. I know a lot of uh, younger people out here don't know what that is. Maybe if you're as old as I am, you know what a naturalizer shoes, shoe is. But anyway, I got into the management program. Within two years, I was a general manager of a retail shoe store. I did that for a couple years. Uh, retail, as anybody knows that has ever been in retail, uh, it is difficult working with 
a number of people in the public. Uh, so anyway, I did that about four years. Uh, I got to the point that I just needed a real change in my life. So I packed up what I had at the time. I was a single young man, 27 years old. I had packed up my little car and I took off to California saying I was going to do one of two things as an entrepreneur <clears throat> because I wanted to 10 bar and I wanted to drive a limousine. I wanted to learn how to do each and both of those jobs with the aspirations of becoming a limousine service owner because I knew I liked driving, I liked working with the public. I don't think I would have minded doing any aspect of that job. I never got to that driving a limo. Just it never happened for me. But I did become a bartender uh, in a small restaurant. I went in for uh, numerous times. I went in and talked to the manager and he kept saying, no, 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 you have no experience. No, you can't do it. No, we don't need help. Uh, you know, just no, no, no. But that was the place that I wanted to work at. Uh, is a place I was hanging around at and I figured why continue spending money there when I could work there uh, Get to know the same people and learn the restaurant business eventually he gave me a chance and As a bartender with that company. I worked as a bartender for a year year and a half uh, Doing very well. I learned all aspects of bartending uh, and I personally, I know that I was very good at it uh, because I'm a people person. I love talking to people and I'm a hard worker. I don't mind working hard. I'm humble in the sense that I don't mind being a service person for others. I've never minded doing that. But through the course of that, I decided I love the restaurant business so much that I could not live as a bartender forever. So I got into their management program. It was a very small little company at the time, only four restaurants. They, they started taking their upper uh, echelon people and working with me personally. And here I am with not without a college degree, but I did have business background because I had worked my way through the retail industry and managed a shoe store. So they took me under their wing, showed me the management responsibilities, duties, what it took to be at least an assistant manager. So I did that. I was an assistant manager in a restaurant for approximately three years, the whole time learning as much as I could, working with the public, learning how uh, to manage people, uh, with the employees. Uh, learning all aspects of the restaurant. I already knew bartending, but I had to be a waiter for a while. I worked in the kitchen for a while to learn how to be a line cook. I was in the management training program, took a lot of courses that they provided through the company. And all of this kept adding and adding and adding to my knowledge of what it took to be successful. And I always continued to have that dream as I was tending bar, as I was learning. As I was doing all the jobs that you really don't want to do as a manager, but you have to know, I continued taking all this in. And finally, my chance came. The person that I was working for, I was assistant manager, they were a manager. They took on a new position, a new career in life. So I was given the opportunity to become a general manager of a restaurant. At the time, that restaurant was doing approximately $750,000 annually in uh, business. I took it over and within six months, using the knowledge I had, the determination and focus that I had to uh, manage people, uh, to use my advertising techniques I picked up uh, with print and radio. But anyway, what I did was within six months, took that restaurant from $750,000 to a million, by the end of uh, one and a half years, uh, as a general manager, that restaurant was doing $1.4 million annual sales. I, I had won every contest. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, during that course of that whole time, this small company from four restaurants uh, started franchising and built it up to approximately, I think it was 26 restaurants throughout California. And uh, anyway, by the end of, 
year and a half, I was up to 1.4 million, almost doubled annual sales, winning all contests, still learning and keeping an eye on the prize of that I wanted to be my own boss, not work in a company for somebody else. I wanted to have my own restaurant at this time. I absolutely loved the restaurant business, the action, the excitement, the ups and downs, the struggles that come along with being a restaurateur. And if you're in the restaurant business, you know what I'm talking about. So I continued to learn and then the big chance came. The company was selling off franchises to general managers at a discount rate and helping them out doing it. Uh, twofold, it would help the, the company because they knew they had stable people. They had people that knew what they were doing. Uh, in particular, my restaurant because I had gotten the sales so far ahead and were still climbing. So I got the opportunity to buy that business and I did. I owned and operated that for the following, I want to say 12 years. So somewhere between 1987 and 2005, I had worked my way through all aspects of the retail and restaurant industries, learning what I needed to do to be a success and owning my own business. So personally, I felt like a success. I mean, I was on cloud nine. Then uh, I ended up getting very, very, very ill um, without getting into specifics about my illness. Uh, it took me out of my business for almost a year. I had to rely on my employees and a, an assistant manager that I had to run and operate the business. By the time I got back and could get into the flow of things, my sales had decreased. There was a massive turnover in employees. The cooks had left. My servers had left. It was all new people. Sales were declining. There was stuff going on. It was just in shambles and it broke my heart. And I ended up having to file bankruptcy on that business. So with all the ups and downs in my life, uh, in my business life, in my entrepreneurial life, uh, I had to, I ended up selling the business, filing bankruptcy on it, just getting out of it. I moved back to Indiana where I had the uh, family, uh, ended up when I got here, I lost my parents both to cancer within about five years of each other. I still have uh, a brother and a sister here in town where I live. My other brother is up north about three, four hours away. So I wanted to, uh, I had to do something else as a living. I started working with my uh, brother as a uh, handyman remodel. I knew nothing about nothing. I, not about remodel, nothing about carpentry, painting, uh, hard labor. Uh, the labor part, sure. Restaurant business, it's not like I sat on my butt 24 hours a day. It was up and moving and always running, but in a whole different way. It wasn't using a hammer and saws and lifting lumber and painting and constantly move, move, move. This was a whole different type of business. So I went ahead and did this with him for the past uh, 10 years. And I ended up learning enough through the trades of remodel, painting. You know, it's really not brain surgery, but you must have the mindset that if you're going to be there doing it, you might as well learn it. If you're gonna do a job, do it right. I wasn't a quitter. So even working for family, which if anybody out there has ever worked for family, you know what kind of turmoil that can put your life into and how situations can change in the uh, family dynamics. And without getting into any of that, I decided that I needed another change in my life. I'd been through the service, the military. I'd been through sales, uh, hardcore sales. I have been through retail training and management. I owned and operated, worked my way up to owning and operating my own restaurant and being very successful at it. I had to lose that. I came to Indiana, learned a whole new skill set, whole new trade, never gave up on it, continued daily until it got to the point in time in my life at 
59 years old, I said enough is enough. I cannot continue to be uh, working physical labor. And besides that, I was doing this at eight hours a day, five, six, sometimes seven days a week being on call uh, as a maintenance person. And I just had to give it up. So this is when I saw the ad, the ad, that life of you know laptop luxury. And you, you're on the internet and you're seeing all these ads and you're thinking, man, if these people can do it, I can do it. So I jump in thinking, hey, piece of cake. Well, me, myself and I, being the non-quitter that I am, uh, have stuck with it. And now I have struggled for the past going on two years. Struggle. Now when we go all the way back to fails and quitting and that being a fail in your life and because I'm not that type of person I know there's many 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 hundreds thousands hundreds of thousands of people out there that have the same basic mindset they are not quitters if you want to learn you can learn so I stuck to it normally after getting into an online business and believing you're gonna make all this money and it doesn't happen immediately most people quit they just quit and the reason they fail at it is because well they quit the only way that you can do this business in the world of online marketing is to number one get a mindset and a skill set that you understand that this is not going to be no overnight success I don't care if you're 20 years old 30 years old 40 50 60 even this day and age 70 if you want to do this you have to connect with the right people you have to use the right systems and tools the world of entrepreneurship online is not a new wheel it's not a new square wheel nothing has to be reinvented the people that are making it online are making it because they follow the systems that need to be followed because it works. Now, going back a year and a half, almost two years now, when I got into this, after three months, I, would, I made absolutely not a cent. I'm thinking, why? Why would I even do this? I was still working my other full-time job, doing all this in the evenings, trying to accumulate as much knowledge as I could. So after three, four, five months and not quitting and still struggling and plodding along and trying to do it my way. I uh, met some really good people online. I ended up uh, hooking up with two of them, not in the that type sense hooking up, but in the sense of uh, that they were going to be my mentors. And they, in the previous years, had struggled the same as everybody does, but they had turned the corner. They were making a living online. So I started following them. They started working with me. As I learned from them, I then knew that you had to have a complete different mindset. It's not all about money. It's not all about just, you know, I'm not going to say screwing people because what I do is not a scam, but it's um, you have to know that you have to have a different mindset, skill set, and use these differently than you have in any other area or aspect of your whole lifetime. Now, if you're 20 years old and getting to, into this, it makes it so much easier because you don't have the baggage. You don't have a set way of doing things, and you can learn this the correct way. And not only that, at 20 or 30, even close to 40 years old, you've grown up with technology uh, at your fingertips. Throughout the course of my lifetime, I can remember back before there were computers, before the internet, of course, when I was in the restaurant business and every night I had to sit with a pen or pencil and paper and mark down and tally every hamburger sold, every amount of alcohol sold and tally this by hand. And then we got a computer and it was a dinosaur of computers, but it was a computer, and I learned how to use that to do the inventories and, and do the ordering. 
Well, nowadays, uh, as you know, it is so much easier. I mean, it's everything's touch screen. You touch it, it redirects, it goes, it does what you want it to do. Um, so it's super, super easy on the front end. What's not easy is the back end to be an online marketer. So along with your mindset, you have to you have to readjust your mind to be a humble person, to know what your why is, why are you doing this? You know, what is gonna keep you going every day, day to day, day in, day out, because quite frankly, I don't care when you start doing this, just know up front you are not going to make a dime for a while. Not unless you are the exception to the rule, lightning in a bottle, which does happen. Yes, it does. Some people online that state they did X in amount, this X amount of time, and they made this much money. It is absolutely legitimately true. But it's because they met up with the right people at the right time, took the information, and started using it the way it was meant to be used. So, within the past five months now, uh, I have started making an income online using the tools of the trade that are accessible to anybody that wants to do this. You do not have to reinvent the wheel. You do not have to find a different way of doing things. All you do is use the same tools and techniques that are readily available to everybody. You just use them the same way that they're meant to be used with your twist. That's all you have to do. Put your little twist on everything you do. Now, when we talk about behind the scenes of what goes on for this laptop luxury lifestyle, you know that there are numerous social media platforms, 40, 50, 60 of them. But of course, the main ones are Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and I said that in the wrong order because it's actually uh, probably Facebook, Google, YouTube. YouTube is right there, soon to be number one in the whole world as far as the information uh, center uh, because you can go to YouTube and find anything and not just read about it, you get to see it, visibly see it. So now, You've got all these platforms to work with. Younger people out there, you know how to use these platforms. You know how to get to them. You know how to go through them. You know how to retrieve the information. You don't know how to put the information in. So that's the side of this you have to learn. And you must learn the tools of the trade to do this. Now, back to the people that I had met, my mentors. They struggled for the years well before they met me by the time I met them, they were earning online, doing what they were passionate about. One was a computer programmer, so he knew the ins and outs of computers. So it was easy for him to do a shop fly store, drop shipping, things like that. The person he met was a graphic designer for the past 10 years. Excellent, excellent graphic designer. I love his work. So these two put their heads together about the same time that I met them. So as they're training me on how, the tools to use and how to do it, I was following along with them using the same uh, tools and techniques that, were, that are readily available. So these two get together and invite me to come in as a spokesperson of the company and they wanted to start a new chapter in their lives. True entrepreneurship they have put together a system to create funnels, landing pages, email lists, autoresponders, uh, the whole ball of wax, the same, all of the tools that you need as an online marketer, not only do you need it, but any two-man business, small business, from two to however many people, to large business, to online, offline, brick and mortar, it doesn't matter where you're at, you all need these tools. So they looked around at all the other companies, all the other softwares, 
and said, you know, we can use some of this, we can use some of that, that one's nice, and they combined it all into one. So now there is one spot, uh, I'm not gonna say one-stop shopping, but if you're a marketer, if you wanna be a marketing agency, there's now one place to go that has all the tools that you need. There's a group of people within this that can teach mindset, give you guidance, show you how to use the tools, what tools need to be used where, when, and how. Uh, it's a meeting of the minds. It is a group like I have never been involved with before. So fortunately for me, in my time in my life at 60 years old, I can now say that I am and I call myself hashtag 60 plus and crushing it because I had the determination and the focus to stick with this, to learn what it took to be an online marketer. I was fortunate enough to meet these two individuals who formed a company, invited me into it. So now I am part of a pure, total 100% entrepreneurial ship uh, company started from the ground up working our way through we've been open a year now and things are firing on all cylinders so if you ever feel like it cannot be done if you think that you can't change your life so car so called change your stripes uh, change the stars in your life trust me and believe in me it can be done with some fortitude, some focus, some reaching deep inside yourself to figure out why you want to do it and being determined enough to actually do it, to learn what needs to be learned, to do it the way other people before you have done it and just put all this together and do it in your own personal way so people get to know you, they get to like you, they get to trust you, and from there, the gates open, the floodgates open. It's as easy as that, yet it's hard, but if you love being an entrepreneur, if you like working for yourself, if you enjoy learning new things daily, if you really are a people person and like to meet people and help people and add value to their lives, anything in this world, this day and age, is possible for anybody of all ages. And I specifically talk to the people that are 50 years old, 60, 65, even 70. You have to keep in mind the lifespan nowadays is much longer. At 20, you have dreams. At 30, you have dreams turning into vision. Somewhere along the line, you may lose focus or sight and get stuck somewhere you don't want to be, not making the kind of money that you want, spending too much time doing it overall, and life is passing you by and you get to 50 or 60, you, you're not there financially, uh, you feel like you're trapped and something's gotta change, make that change. Reach out, reach out to me, reach out to the person that you see online that you can get to know, that you can trust, and let them guide you to where you want to go in life because I'm telling you, from experience that online marketing is not a scam. Yes, there are programs and there are people out there that will take you for every cent that you have uh, if you allow them to. So you just don't hilly, willy nilly throw your bank card out there and say, yes, here's X amount of money, help me out. And then you never see them again. Uh, I know for a fact that myself and the company I'm working with is certainly not that way. I've recruited many people into this company already with tons more coming in uh, daily, weekly, and monthly, and it's only growing faster. And these people are young, old, 
with no experience to much experience, but they all need exactly what I am doing and what I have gotten the chance in my life to learn how to do. So if you need the help, if you want to make a change in your life, if you want time freedom, financial freedom, if you want to just leave that legacy, which is what I'm working on, to your wife or your children or your children's children for that matter, be the next Bill Gates, um, be anybody you want to be. If you just want to have enough money to have a little bit of time freedom in your life, it's there for the taking. If you want to be a multi-millionaire and you want to be a jet setter and travel around on your own private Gulf Stream, that money is there also. It just takes time and effort to get there. In my case, at going on 61 years old now, I don't have that much more time to build what I believe to be the multi-million dollar company because as I grow, I'm just accumulating enough money to set me financially free for the rest of the days of my life and leave the legacy to people that have known me in my past and said that I could not do it, that they will know that I did it. And I did it because you have to start. Take action. Reach down there, touch a button. Connect with me. Connect with the person that you think that you know you can trust. I don't care how you do it or who you do it with. Just do it. Set yourself free. This is a new day. It's a new age. Anybody can be somebody. And anybody can be the person that they want to be. If you want to just sit back and relax on a beach somewhere, you've got to have the money to do it. Learn this. Get that residual income coming in. Go lay on the beach the rest of your life. If, you want to, if you're young enough and you want to do this and build this into a multi-bazillion dollar company, you've got the time in your life to do it. Again, you've got to start somewhere. It doesn't happen by sitting there watching me or watching the other guy drive around in his Lamborghini, uh, flashing his cash and all his jewelry. It's not going to happen. You know and I know that we are not Beyonce. Um, we're not the... Sorry, Michael Jackson. Uh, we're not spectacular athletes. Uh, we're not going to sign up with anybody that's going to hand us multi-million dollar a year contracts to do whatever it is we can do because we're not those people. But all of those people have one thing in common. They all work towards the goal that they wanted from a very young age, never losing sight of what they wanted out of life, and for whatever reason they did it for, if they have the love of music, if they have the love of playing a guitar, standing in front of a crowd, they want to make money. Whatever their reason is, is fine, but it takes fortitude and effort to get there. Take that time, connect with me. Let me help you get started, at least. Just take that very, very first step, do what it takes, to just get started. I know that's what I did. Finally had it, that day of despair, that day that I said I can't do what I'm doing any longer for the person or people that I'm doing it for, for whatever reasons, that was enough. I'm going to learn a different trade, a different skill set, a different mindset. So I reached out, I touched that button, I got involved, I didn't give up, I'm still here, now I'm earning an income online, and I love every minute of it, every minute. So if you want to do any of this, if any of this sounds exciting to you, if you wanna change your life, you wanna better yourself, you wanna learn a new skill, for whatever reason, reach on out. Anyway guys, I think that's enough for one day. Uh, I probably rambled on enough for you, but uh, I hope you enjoyed listening to me. I hope you got some value out of this, and I really hope that you take action, connect with me or somebody in your life that can show you the way to free yourself mentally, financially, 
time, freedom wise, whatever you want out of life, just do it. I'll talk to y'all real soon.